William Duma, from the book Take That Glory, Lord, by Mary Garnett, G-A-R-N-E-T-T. -T. William's early years. William Duma was born into a Christian Zulu family in South Africa in the beginning of the 20th century, about 1907. He lived to the end of 1976, in a place where the power of demons were part of everyday life. Our Savior had gotten hold of his parents. One day an elderly lady came to Duma's home and William's mother, N-O-M-B-U-L-A, realized that she had something unique. It did not take her long to receive the same Savior. God was preparing godly parents for William. Noma Viva would go to her prayer hideout at dawn every morning, being trained in prayer for a boy who would be known as a man of prayer. Some time later, his father also met Jesus, which led to their family being expelled from the extended family. Noam Vila knew even before William's birth that he would be a preacher. When she died, she said to her son, My son, I want you to be an infundidus, because that is what God sent you to be on earth for, which is a preacher. As a boy, William was consumed with the wonder of creation. At the age of 15, he committed his life to Christ. From the age of 12 to 20, William had serious health problems which led to disappointment, why questions, and waning faith. However, God was preparing him for the ministry he had prepared him for. William was a shepherd attending school and working in the store when possible. One day, aware of his call to be a preacher, yet constantly ill, he decided to fast and pray for seven days. He left early in the morning to go to the secret place, returning at sunset. On the seventh day, he knew he had met God, yet was not healed. But God changed his desire for healing with the greater longing of God being his only desire. At midnight that day, he got up to pray. He felt a touch on his head and knew it was the finger of God. Heat, like fire, raced through his body, causing him to sweat profusely. He collapsed. And as he lay on the floor, he felt a surge of cold, follow the heat, and realize, almost incredulously, that the pain was no more. Well, he made a covenant with God to meet with him every day at midnight for the rest of his life. Anointed to heal. His own healing was not yet his commission to a healing minister. William went to Duban, where he became a cook and started attending Bible classes. Soon after, he became an evangelist of a small, lively church where God used him for healing for the first time. He says, I did not dwell on the healing. I thought it was just an isolated episode of my life, not to be in any way repeated. However, the next healing followed soon after. In 1939, he took the pastorate of a church of seven people. After a year of hard, fruitless labor, he became so dissatisfied that he left for 21 days to fast and pray. Because the Holy Spirit tells me God will meet me there. And he sure did. He said, Every day I saw God, my spirit moved nearer to the Holy of Holies, while God searched my heart unsparingly. On the 21st day following, this happened. Quote, Until feeling suddenly very warm, I threw the sun, must have risen, raising my head, I found I was in the center of dazing light. A curtain of shining gold suspended in space slightly above the ground completely encircled my dark figure. I was confused with wonder as I discovered my body was growing. Then with authoritative clarity came a voice soft yet strong, remote yet near, commanding as a king, assuring as a lover. Your dead church will become a witness to me. You will see humanity transformed from darkness to light. My son, I anoint you with the gift of healing. I charge you to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, to perform in his name the ministry of healing body, soul, and spirit. From the book, Take That Glory, Lord, page 26. William set up a stone of a memorial and will return every year for prayer and fasting and intercession. And every year, amazing manifestations of God's power and healing follow Duma's yearly retreat at E-M-O-L-W-E-N-I. Signs and Wonders he came down from the hill and he was totally transformed, reminding us of Moses when he'd seen God's glory. 
William's ministry started growing rapidly, seeing healings, deliverances, and even raising the dead. He would always pray in the name of Jesus and refused to pray for those who rejected his name. As the church was growing in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord commissioned his church to be constantly kindled by prayer, which led to an establishment of a weekly intercessory prayer and healing service. He encouraged the attendees to fast that day from dawn to the close of the service at around 3 or 4 p.m., and many testimonies of healing would be recounted from those meetings. In a nation gripped by the power of the witchcraft and a gift of discernment was frequently given to William. Whether it was the discernment of spirits, of sin in people's lives, or hidden things taking place. There was healings through cloths. There was even raising of the dead. Lydia was one of the examples of one that was raised from the dead. There was casting out of demons. The ministry even went abroad. William did not only travel in South Africa and the neighboring countries, but he also ministered in Congo, Germany, and Scotland. His travels abroad made him very much aware of his inadequacies, as it had been cast earlier that he had gone to white churches. On one occasion, he was to speak to ministers of the Church of Scotland who intimidated him because of their many degrees and him having no polish in English. The Lord assured him he was with him and the power of God surged through him, releasing the power of God in the meeting. God confirmed his word with signs and wonders, healing in Scotland the same way he did in South Africa. There were many attacks from the, from the devil through witchcrafts. There was busyness of life and problems that would, can, would come up from there. William Duma's life is a remarkable example of the power of prayer. He would spend whole nights in prayer making people wonder when he was sleeping. It was his sweet communion with the Lord in the early morning while energizing him. Gave him his marching orders and the power and authority to heal. His life is an inspiration for us to imitate his zeal, giving us hope. That is not the person that makes the difference with the time that's spent with the Lord, the hunger and commitment, readiness to lay down ourselves and everything we are and have. Most of all, I'm greatly encouraged to see the Lord raising up indigenous African people who would grow up surrounded by witchcraft with very little life, yet knowing the power of spirits and how much greater our Lord God is. William Duma was not perfect, but he was a great, great man of God, mightily used. You can read about William Duma in the book. Take Thy Glory, Lord, by Margaret, last name spelled G-A-R-N-E-T-T. -T. This has been...